at that mess. What do you call that? <laughs> Mate, that's the whole. That's like just a big pus. I look at this. That's just pus. Man just had its first carnage. <laughs> What'd you do? No. Oh, you hit the corner. The corner's got little, little strips come off. Little dig in the corner. Oh, look. that's all right. All right, so we're looking for a turn off up here at some stage. That's the turn off. Little Creek, there it is. See my signpost. This is the, this, this is the kind of four wheel driving that we like. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah, impassable in the wet season, I reckon. This is it, mate. Straight up. This gets real tight. Here we go. Let's work for it. All right. Well, I think I might start looking for some four wheel drive. <laughs> mm. You might be right. First bit of off-roading I've had in my van too. We'll see how she handles it. Looks like a bit of a wet section, mate. Sweet. All right, I'm just gonna pick a track here. That was gonna be a pretty little creek. It's just a washout. Gotta be careful. I can't go chopping around trees and stuff, so because I've got my trailer on. Slippery. A bit slippery. I'm gonna have to stick a wheel in this rut, mate, because I can't duck and weave around these trees. Oh, I didn't want to get my car dirty. Geez, you can't beat horsepower. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's the worst we got to contend with, it's all good. Oh yeah, that is a cracker. So I just, I'd pulled up here in the car before, just before we went through that crossing, and I noticed on the ground here, now this is a telltale sign of what's in this tree. Now you wouldn't believe it, but you come walking through this bush, and I don't know, let's say you're lost, <laughs> and you're, you're wandering around, you're looking for something to eat, you wouldn't believe that there'd be some bush tucker sitting around here. Now, this telltale sign here is, it's, it's almost like um, a sawdust on the ground. And it's a bit of bush tucker and it's pretty cool. So I'll get Simon, um, I'll need a bit of a hatchet because my knife isn't, I've been digging around here, but my knife isn't going to cut it. Hey, Simon. Hey. Hey, mate, you want to, have you got a little hatchet with you? Yeah, mate, I'll just grab it. Have a look at this, mate. What it is, it's a bogon moth. Now, but it's the larvae is what I want. I want the larvae. Now, he's dug a hole in this tree. Now, he's burrowing in there, and he come in when he was really small, and then he got in there and he's eaten it out, and he's got really fat now. Because yeah. you can see, see the size of the hole? Yeah. When I came in with the, with the, with the knife and I started it's digging around, it was a little hole, eh? Hey? And then look at the size of it. Anyone who's had citrus trees, that suddenly the tops of them fall off and they die. <laughs> That's Quite right. often this guy's the culprit. Yeah, so in the bush, mate, these things are just gold. So what I will need to do is, now I'm not going to hurt the tree, and we're just going to put like a little scar on the side of it. Look at that, see? Big hole coming in. <laughs> He's been burrowing in there. See, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm only cutting a little whole sec, little section here. So this would be just like a little scar on the tree, like these things here. The tree will eventually just grow over that and it won't harm the tree at all. The actual grub could actually kill the tree worse than we could. The old bogon moth, eh? Old grub. The witchetty grub from hell, basically. Oh! You see, he's turned around since we started doing stuff. Look at that! <laughs> There we go, look at him. Now the bit we want is the tasty bit on here, that bit there, and we want to hold on to this bit, because that's the bit, if you get in close, you'll see his little head, and that's what chews, does all the damage. You eat the ass. Oh my God. You're supposed to eat half of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it was tasty! Oh my god! Oh, it was tasty! <laughs> Gotta find another tree now. Oh mate, it's like it's like scrambled eggs. I kid you not. I 
I can't verify that because someone ate it all. <laughs> it's like eating scrambled eggs. Oh, I'll have to get out of the truck and cook myself something now. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky we're not lost in the bush. Hey, mate, I was doing all the chopping. I figured I'd get to eat the first one. Pick a track, any track. Don't take the roof off the van. This will be one of those creeks we've got to cross. It's not too bad. It's got a hard bottom, this one. That'd be a greasy little sucker in the wet. Yeah, the other side here, too. I'm just lucky there's not a lot of water. Tight little turn there. That's how the whole car spins around, even my van spun around. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit messy up here. You don't stop there. Yeah, you're all crossed up there a bit. Yeah, there's a nasty little sort of dip up here, um, which I'm going to try and cut across to. Oh, I don't hit it too hard. It's nasty. I don't want to drop a wheel in. Yeah, baby. <laughs> that was nasty. Yeah, that's a nasty little hole there to the right. Did you diff lock that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm stuck it, mate. I'm proper stuck it. <laughs> oh, it's muddy out there, too. Ugh, yuck. Stinky grey pus. Oh, get the tree protector out of here, mate. Oh, hook her on. There we go. Right. All right, mate, take up the slack. Come on, baby. Way you go. Go on, matey. All right, nice and steady. That's it, nice and steady. That's it. She's good. She's good. She's coming. Look at that mess. What do you call that? <laughs> Mate, that's the whole. <laughs> that's like just a big pus. Oh, look at this. That's just pus. Van just had its first carnage. <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, oh, you hit the corner. The corner's got little, little strips come off. Little dig in the corner. Oh, look. that's all right. Messy. I'm gonna go just over here and have a look. Very good. A tight section here, mate. It's a bit rutted out. You can see that. Oh, Betsy. Up you go, baby. Car's Maxi, and the van can be Jake. JK, Jake. Come on, Jakey. Ooh. <laughs> you out there, mate? They're a little busy at the moment. Come on, baby. Up you go. Oh, those diff locks do the trick. <laughs> Scratching going on up there. Up you go. Scratching for traction. He was scratching, I'm gonna be really scratching. Oh, little Maxie, she's up in the air. So far so good. Jake's still upright. Come on, Jake. Oh, Jake's got a fair lean though. Stop, 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 stop. All right. Come baby, come on. <laughs> Jake's still over right. Oh, he's already banged his step. All good? You're a bit rough on the gear, mate. What have we done now? You bashed up my step. 
<laughs> when when did that happen? My man's name's Jake. Jake? Yeah, I named it. Jake? Jake. Oh, Jake. sweet. Jake. Good old Jake. Getting Jake, getting Jake on her feet. There she is, mate. You can see across the, uh, the flats there to Middle Island. That's the island the lighthouse is on. Yeah, that's the one. See the headland in front of you? Yep. Tide's definitely out around here. Looks like the end of the line. That looks like us, mate. Not and the water, creek buddy. looks a little bit dry. <laughs> Someone pulled the plug. Yeah. Don't. Should have been here four hours ago. So if you get across, see the, the gate? Yep. But I, I don't have a key, so... You'd be able to drive across, but then you'd be stuck there when the tide come in. There we go. Oh, that's, the there. Yeah, you see, that's where the creek is. So this is the high point. Well, they feel it with rock, but once you get in there, we might be able to launch in there a lot sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, this is hard. We, can get the buggy down. we always seem to be waiting for the tide. I'll tell you what, let's set up camp. We'll sit around the fire and we'll just wait till the morning. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the Premium Adventure Recovery System from Campos 4x4. Now, this is an awesome little kit. Now, I put this kit together so that you've got all the little things that you need when you're out on an adventure and you get yourself bogged and you're looking for recovery. So, if you get a chance, check it out. Campos 4x4 shop online or get down to your local Campos dealer and they'll have plenty of these in stock. Otherwise, mate, stop listening to me Babylon and get on with your adventure. In the morning, the tide is in, so the tinny hits the water. To start the run, out to the lighthouse. Yeah, bring it down, mate. Now we got a lot more water this morning. There was no way we were gonna launch that boat yesterday, but this morning we got heaps of water and we're gonna have a crack heading out to this island. All right, let's go, eh? Let's hit it, buddy. Do this thing! This is Pancake Creek, and we'll work our way out to the mouth. So that is Busted Head in the distance. We land on Aircraft Beach. It doubles as the lighthouse's landing strip at low tide. We start the trek up to the lighthouse. Now the lighthouse started back in 1868. It came from the UK, ordered by the recently formed Queensland Government. It was home to many families over the next 120 odd years. So we get the chance to have a look into the life of a lighthouse keeper. Hello? Hello? Anyone home in the lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> Not every day you get knocked knock on the lighthouse door. Howdy, howdy. How are you going? What are you guys up to? Oh, just here to look after the lighthouse. <laughs> Did you do? I've never been in the lighthouse. No, no, you can no. come in today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're That's coming. Awesome. Let's go and have a look. We're going in. This thing here had chains and everything in it. So what had to happen every two hours or so during the night, the light keeper would have to come over, wind up the chains, yep. the weights would drop down, and the oil with burner would then be able to rotate up the top. So, wow. so every two hours I'd do that. So every two hours at night. At yeah. night, yeah. At night. At yes. night. Well, yeah. I don't need it in the daytime. Yeah. So old yeah. mate's there every two hours. He's what on night. Sure he's on night shift, mate. Yeah. <laughs> There's Stuart. He didn't quite make it. That was Stuart. <laughs> old mate didn't make it. No, no. And they bound up. It took up this whole space up here. Yeah. So, um, and in the daytime, what they used to have to do is put passion curtains around up here to stop the sun shining on the lenses, which would then could create a fire. So they had to stop the wow. lenses because they weren't rotating. Yeah. So now they have this, and what do you reckon would lights, what size light bulb would be in there? It's a 6,000 watt. No, there's, a, there's a 60 watt light bulb in there. 60 <laughs> watt. 
and the lens reflects it out to about 14 job. kilometres out to sea. Wow. 60 watt, that's it. 60 watt that's the lens you need on the 200. <laughs> oh, yes. So, do you, want to, do, you want to, do you want to have a look at the scenery we have to put up with out here? Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. I reckon it'd be pretty specky. Don't lose your hat. Woohoo! Vertigo. Look at that. They are the reasons why they built the lighthouse here. The, these rocks. So the one way out there is called outer rock. Yep. The one in here is called inner rock. And the one in the middle is middle, middle rock. rock. <laughs> and between middle rock and inner rock is inner middle rock, which we can't see at the moment because the tide's too high. Yep. Now, the lighthouse keeper and their families ran this for 118 years. Now, it became automated back in 1986. And then, of course, it was subject to vandalism. And it wasn't, it wasn't until 2002 that they came in, the association came in, the Lighthouse Association came in, and they, they rebuilt the place. So I remember when I was a young fella that I came, I came here about when I was about 16, 17 years old. And I remember it all, all you know, vandalised and holes in the walls back then. So they've done a marvellous job. Now, the thing about this lighthouse is it is strewn in a lot of tragic history. The Wilkinson family, who lost two members of their family in one day due to drowning. And it's stories like these that, you know, they, they really connect with, with the Australian, you know, the Australian people in the old days, in the, you know, the history that comes from an area like this. But it also shows that the true grit and the true guts of the lighthouse keepers here in Australia especially the ones that manned this lighthouse for another 118 years until it became automated in 1986. Hey guys, if you've been touring around this great country of ours, camping, boating, fishing, four-wheel driving and adventuring as much as I have, then you know that you've got to rely on good quality gear. Now, Campos 4x4 have put together an awesome range of products that are made from quality components. Now there's heaps of cheaper stuff out there and we won't mention those brand names. You know who they are. Now, when we design things, they're designed to last and you don't want them to fail right at that time when uh, you really need them. Anyway, if you want a chance to check out some good quality gear, get onto Campos 4x4's web store, okay, and uh, check out the shop there. Otherwise, mate, if you look in the list, there's a good chance there's a Campos dealer right around the corner from you. Anyway, let's stop mucking around here and get back to the adventure. Look, like we said before, there is always time for fishing, but 1770 is much, much more. So there's so much history in this area, now particularly Busted Bay. Now, would you believe it that Cook, so James Cook and Banks, which was his botanist, came ashore here for fresh water. Now, they collected fresh water, like literally it was almost where today's boat ramp is there at 1770. Now, they looked out across that bay, and the reason why they call it Busted Bay is because they'd gone for a bit of a hunt, they were looking for a feed, and they end up shooting this turkey. Now, it was about 17 and a half pounds, he reckons, and they said it was the best feed they had since they left England. So, they, they ate this turkey, and they end up naming the bay across from 1770 all the way over to the lighthouse. They end up naming it Busted Bay after the turkey. So there you go, shot a turkey, had a feed, and away they went. So we're gonna head out to, um, we head out wide in a place called the Bunker Groups, a series of, of awesome, basically the start of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, the beauty of this place is, is I used to come here, and Simon, and we still do, come here a lot when we were younger, and also now, so we know the country really well, but, we have, uh, I have chucked in a, a, a good mate of mine, Tony, or T-Bone as they call him, and uh, he pretty much lives here. So he knows this country really, really well. So if we don't catch fish, it's his fault. <laughs> so it's good to have a bit of uh, local knowledge. Let's get out there, see what we can find. It's gonna back off this afternoon, so we're hoping we'll get a good run home. Well, let's go hit it. Don't run aground here though, because that'd be all, all right. right. That's very bad. A bit choppy this morning. A little bit of a bite. We've got a... Come on, baby. What do we got? Is it a keeper? A lot of huffing and puffing, Carl. There is so. <laughs> yeah. 
Out of touch. All this colour. Oh, it's not huge. It's putting on a turn, but I think it's a trout. It's a trout. 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 Good one. Yeah, not bad. Right. Oh. Quality fish. We won't be throwing him back. There's a few fish on the sounder now, Simon. Yeah, a couple of big arches, that's what we want. Nice. See what this is. Big hussa. It's always hussa, that one. Big er hussa. It's yeah. a fish, dude. It's a big fish. It's proper. It's a proper fish. Come away from the bottom, you. Come on. You run me in the reef, I will not be impressed. Get off the bottom. Oh! Oh, he's trying to run me. There we go, we're away from the bottom, we're good. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> what do you reckon? I don't know, it's got some horsepower. You got the plug? You get the plug? It was a fish to start with. Oh, I thought I had it off the bottom. I think he's run me. Here's a good one. Yoo! Good job. Nice one. Look at that one. That's a better fish. That's what we want. They taste good too. Oh, oh they're wicked. Yes! Oh. Yep. Up you come. Oh. Here he comes. Bigger. A lot of colour. Might be a trout, eh? No, no, no. Oh, Bigger red. red. <laughs> Alright, so we need that. Twice the size of that. Basically. That's a good looking fish. With twice the size. So that's a red emperor, juvenile red. You can still see the stripes. All right, there we go. Swims off, grows bigger. This is the fish. Got him. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Better looking fish, mate. Oh, yes. Oh, no, <laughs> big trigger. Look at that. That's nice. Oh, Woo! <laughs> oh mate, give me the wrong. Give me the stitch up. Oh, that was a better fish. That was a heaps better fish. Oh, no. Looking sharky. Coming up, might be a solid fish. The run was a bit sharky, but the kick now is like a fish. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Let's oh, go. Give him a little rod of work out. Could be a good red. How good would that be? It is the big red spot. It is the, it is fine a bit like a big red, I've got to tell you. How good would that be? I'd be a little bit happy about that. That's got good head thumbs. I'm going big red. <laughs> I'm going big grey. No, 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 no. Don't jinx me. Don't jinx me. Oh, Carla, it's a stonking fish. Yeah, got the game. Oh, it's a big Chinaman, I reckon. Can we get Chinaman here? Yeah. It's the biggest Chinaman you've ever seen in your life. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> that would have been a red from hell. Oh, can you imagine if that was a red? Oh. <laughs> That's just a stoinker. It's a good fish, but bugger. Oh. <laughs> Here, let me get those hooks for you. Look at that, what a cracker. I've never seen one that big. That is a cracker, isn't That's it? That's a horse. That's a cracking fish. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. If that was a red fish, oh, you can't eat these fish. You can, but they're renowned for Siggy Terra. Yeah, well, if you want to you wanna keel over and die, yeah, we don't want to eat her up, but <laughs> definitely not. Let's pop him back in, eh? Well, go. buddy, that was good fun. Time for you to go back to the deep. See you, dude. Woo! Oh! Something just smoked it. Just smoked it. Don't be a shark. Don't be a shark. Don't be a shark. <laughs> Please don't be a shark. 
It's not feeling sharky now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's got Chinaman written all over it. <laughs> oh, it's fish. It's going It's a good fish. Yeah, it's a fish. It's heavy. Don't be Chinaman. Don't be Chinaman. Oh, it's a big cod. It's a stoinking cod. Look stoinking. at that. Look at you guys. Oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, well done. Yeah. Let me get those hooks out. Big estuary cod. Pretty Bang cool up. around here. Beautiful, yeah. Big estuary. He's a beauty. Goodbye. Now that ends a top day's fishing. Introducing the home of Australian adventure. Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of four-wheel driving, <laughs> fishing, touring, rig builds, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Hope the airbags take up. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure. Get me out of here, boys. Water's coming in. Unleashed. Oh, that's tight. And more original series from Jace and the team. In this mini-series, we're going to be exploring some of the most remote coastlines. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. Snappers, mate, this is all going on down here. You can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Yeah! That's why Unleashed TV oh, yeah. is the home of Australian adventure. Oh yeah!